This is an example about chocolate. So we have the demand schedule, which is different prices and different quantity demands for chocolate. And this is the graph of the demand curve of chocolate. So at price of two, our quantity demand is eight from our demand schedule or demand table. And then on the graph, I will go horizontally from price of two till I intersect with the demand curve. And then I go vertically, I will get quantity demand of eight. So this point on the demand curve, I will label it as point A. Then what will happen if the price increases from two to three? I know that at three, the quantity demand is six. Therefore, from the graph at price of three, I will go horizontally till I intersect with the demand curve. And then I go down till I get the quantity demand of six. This point, I will label it P. Therefore, what happened when we changed the price from 2 to 3? The quantity demand dropped from 8 to 6, which means we moved from point A to point B on the same demand curve. Therefore, we will call it a movement. So when will we have a movement on the same demand curve if we have a change in price? So this means that I will move from one point to another on the same demand curve. Any point on the demand curve is called quantity demanded. Therefore, a movement means we have a change in quantity demanded. Let's assume that the government is going to impose a tax on a chocolate. Why? Because too much sugar is unhealthy. For example, in UK, we have sugar tax. Therefore, we will have a new quantity demanded, which means we will have a lower quantity demanded at each price. So at price of one, we'll have quantity demanded eight. At price of two, it will be six. And then we have four, two and zero. Let's draw it. At price of one, our new quantity demanded is eight. At price of two, the quantity demand is 6. At price of 3, quantity demand is 4. At price of 4, quantity demand is 2. At price of 5, quantity demand is 0. Then let's connect all these dots together. This will give us a new demand curve and we will label it as D2, demand 2. So what happened in this example? Our demand curve shifted to the left from D to D2. Therefore, this is an example of a shift. So when our entire demand curve would shift, if we have any other factor except then the price of this product, which we call it non-price factor. Even if it's a price of another product, this would result in a shift of the demand curve. Therefore, if we shift the demand curve, it means that we have a new demand curve. Consequently, this is a change in demand. Therefore, a movement, which means we move from one point to another on the same demand curve, will happen only if we change the price. Therefore, we have a change in quantity demand, but a shift, we have a new demand curve and any other factor except then the price of this product. That's why we call it non-price factors. And this would result in a new demand curve. Consequently, this is a change in demand.